Greetings gaming historians and welcome to Lord of Lore, where we break down the lore and history of our favorite video games and fantasies. And today, we're going back to the world of Amalur to discuss something concerning both lore and gameplay, and that is character builds. Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning is known for its huge world, fun quests, and interesting art style, but its best aspects have to be its combat customization and its rich world lore. Today, we're going to be combining these aspects as I present to you three different types of characters, what their history in the world of Amalur is, and what kind of equipment, stats, and skills you'll need to play them. A special shout out to Robert K. Wolf for the suggestion. Without further ado, let's discuss! The Losafar stand out as being one of the playable, and most prominent, races in the game of Reckoning. But for our deep lore enthusiasts, we know that the Losafar are people that hail from the cold wastelands of Feral, where they value justice above all else, as taught by their patron god, Enidon. While all true Losafar seek to carry out justice, none do it more so than Enidon's loyal priests, the Justiciers. Trained in the will of Enidon and possessing powerful magics, Justiciers are revered inquisitors who travel the land of Feral and minister justice, provide verdicts for Losafar settlements, and enforce order through the Losafar warriors under their command. Long ago, when the Alfar nearly wiped out the Direct to extinction in order to avenge the death of a royal heir, it was the Justiciers who declared that enough vengeance had been delivered and that the rest of the Durek were to be allowed to retreat. Though this controversial verdict eventually led to the schism that divided Losafar and Dalkalfar, the Justiciers would continue to guide and watch over the Losafar kingdom, promoting order through the world and bringing harsh punishment on those who perverted justice, particularly dark cults and otherworldly powers. While the Fateless One might never be able to travel to Glen Suthane or adopt the purple robes of a Justicier, there are numerous ways to resemble the Justiciers in both appearance and gameplay. First, the player will obviously want to choose Losafar as their race and Enidon as their patron god. Next, open the Gorhart chest and equip the Frost Robes. While it doesn't exactly resemble the purple robes of the Justiciers, it is a great starting robe that will help you as you focus on your ice and magic build. Focus on equipment and charms that boost your elemental abilities, particularly ice, and for weaponry, wield a ranged magic weapon like a scepter or preferably chakrams to devastate your foes from afar, using a staff as a secondary weapon when enemies get too close. Make sure to spend your ability points on sorcery abilities, particularly weapon upgrades, ice barrage, conservative casting, frost shackle, sphere protection, and healing surge. In the late game, make sure to equip and upgrade Summon Ferragorta and Sphere of Retribution to keep your squishy but powerful mage alive, and use abilities like Winter's Embrace and Elemental Rage to delete enemies before they even have a chance to attack you. As for equipment, you'll want to spend some points into smithing and save crafting to make an overpowered Spirit Weave set, a set that not only will have awesome stats, but also have purple and gold accents to match the Justicier look. As for weapons, you could handcraft some overpowered weapons, but feel free to use whatever weapon you like the look of. You'll be doing more damage with your abilities than your weapons. Also, note that when it comes to gameplay choices, always do what is right and what is deserving. Justice does not bow down to the law, nor does it bow down to pity. Protect the weak and good wield above the rules, but make sure that even a repentant criminal gets what he deserves. Sometimes that means being cold and unforgiving just like the cold wastes of Feral, where the Justiciers reign. In the Almain Kingdoms, the Church of Matharu ensures order and loyalty throughout the land, and this often requires an iron fist. While magic has its purposes, the use of magic by the common folk is prone to disaster, harm, and worst of all, chaos and it is for this reason that the church forbids any Almain outside the Archon of Order from practicing magic. However, during the Age of Ruin, the growth of magic and its associated disasters forced the church to take drastic measures, giving much power and authority to the Holy Order of the Divine Law. Being above the authority of any lord, duke, or other minor nobles, the Holy Order, often referred to as the Strictures, are a feared group of witch hunters who oppose the use of magic of any kind, and that also applies to any races that might encourage or embody it. For players who want to play as a holier-than-thou-art paladin, this build is for you. To start, the player will obviously need to choose Almain as their race and Matharu as their patron god. Because this build swears off the use of magic or any spells, you will need to rely on an upfront melee approach, 
but the strictures are not above using cunning and schemes in order to see magic punish. For this build, you'll want to focus on might points and with just a little bit of finesse, using heavy armor and melee weapons like swords, great swords, and hammers to crush your foes, or maybe even daggers if you're the stealthy type, but absolutely no fey blades. As for your abilities and stats, a good melee character needs to rely on stun to punish even the tankiest of foes, and you'll want an area of effect attacks to punish crowds and distant enemies. For this, try focusing on abilities like Harpoon to snatch sneaky squishy sorcerers, Skillful Defense, Quake which has amazing stun in the end game, Battle Frenzy, Relentless Assault, and Warcry. Of course, weapons will be your main way of dishing damage and punishing heretics, but these abilities will keep you from being hit in the back or punished by ranged enemies. Near the end game, Wrath and Celerity are a must, turning you into a flying Beyblade of damage and thanks to the level cap increase of Fate Sworn, you can also invest into some finesse abilities to open up new opportunities for damage and strategy. As far as weapons and armor, practically anything would be fine, but Goliath armor and Chaos weapons that boost speed for parries is going to be the best unique equipment, allowing you to reach attack speeds of over 900% while one-shotting most foes with each swing. Some of you might wonder why a Paladin would use Chaos weapons, but remember, like the Almain, the Warsworn and Firstsworn ancestors used the Order and Anti-Chaos powers as taught them by Matharu, so these holy weapons are right up the Stricture's alley. As far as story choices, make sure you always follow Order, which means keeping promises and following the law, and stay out of magic business whenever you can, or better yet, find ways to stop magic and its dangers whenever possible. Long ago, the seafaring Varani established Fort Olicorn upon Dregshore as a mere trading post, but they soon realized that control of the fort gave them unequaled control of the northern Feyland's coastline. Upon realizing its importance, many wars were fought, and many civilizations were built atop the ruins of another, only to be torn down in the endless struggle for control of the fort. First, the Jotun took it from the Varani, then the Durek from the Jotun, then the Virga from the Durek, but still these armies fight. The Varani are the true heirs of Olicorn, having both built and conquered its walls time and time again. As a conqueror of Olicorn, you must be a fearless warrior, using whatever means necessary to hone your skills so that you may one day retake the fort of your forefathers. This is a simple but rather open-ended build that prioritizes both finesse and might, with maybe a pinch of sorcery to call upon the superstitious powers the Varani often invoke. First, pick a Varani as your race, and then either Theoden or Njordir as your patron god. As a swashbuckling scrapper, focus on using daggers and bows as your main weapons, or maybe even a sword, and put ability points into finesse to get abilities like Assassin's Art, Shadow Flare, Frost Trap, Smoke Bomb, Blade Honing, and your favorite weapon upgrades, as well as a few might points to purchase abilities like Harpoon and Battle Frenzy. Fight and level up as you will, but your main goal will be to get to Gallows End as that is where your swashbuckling adventure really begins. Unique armor sets like Privateer are great for cosplay, but make sure your equipment is always high enough to get you through the endgame. Maybe just throw on a pirate's hood or a troll skin hood over dread scale armor to give you the best stats. If you want a bit of sorcery, Frost Shackle will increase the effects of Frost Trap and Conservative Casting will ensure you always have enough mana to cast your useful abilities. Weapons and skills are great, but make sure to always use assassinations and ranged attacks whenever possible. As a ruthless corsair, you do not play fair. This also means you're free to behave however you want, especially if it makes you richer or stronger. The war for Olicorn will suffer no weakness. <laughs>